Okay, it's recording. You Good hit. evening. Hey, Jeff. How you hey, doing? Hey, Scott. Man? What's up? Hey, I thought I'd have a little chat with you. Because you have this thing out there. You got a book, right? I have a book, which I have been promoting profusely um, for the last over a year uh, since it came out in June. And I'm glad to be on with an expert channeler to talk about my <laughs> source, my source for these writings. Yeah. There we, I got a copy of your book here. Jeff Bailey speaks to itself. Uh, in the back, we got com a commodity of musings from yep. your life. And I basically, with that title, know that as a timepiece or as a, a piece in history, just like you might bury in the ground, each of these is unique and each of these musings um, I like to think of as invaluable. So it's kind of a double-edged thing because poetry books are a hard sell but on the other hand each one of these invaluable channeling um, or invaluable messages that I was channeled basically point to what the book is for me um, you know divinely inspired forever inscribed um, just like an Akashic record uh, transcending mm -hmm. time just as it says in the description on Amazon yeah, there you go. So, the, do do you have more out there besides what's in this? Correct, book? I I do. Um, and it's funny that you bring it up because they're disseminated here, there, and everywhere. Uh, they're on uh, free sites like Simile Co uh, under Jeff Free Bailey, I believe, and Vocal Media under uh, Jeff Free Bailey. And what they do or what these are are bonuses that aren't published yet and in fact it took about 20 years to write the poems that you see within that book so you know um just as uh for anybody who might be skeptical about poetry or reading it this is the type of book that can draw non-lovers and you know lovers of the the genre together simply because it eschews or avoids a lot of the trappings, uh, you know, the ho hum rhyming or the the actual belief that meter is king. Um, I like to think of it as, you know, rhythm is rhyme as opposed to rhyme is rhythm or rhythm and rhyme. Uh, because right now, with this intersectionality of the 3D and the 5D, it really speaks to the fact, no pun intended, that we have a, an opportunity to recast our lives based on the revelations of these experiences so that, you know, we have the 3D play in the past, present, and the future, but we also have the ability to transcend that when we basically channel from above what it is that we're feeling, whether it's about what we think are the most mundane things to the, the bigger things in our lives. What those words do is create a new experience that will forever treasure because either if it is a recast or it's not a recast it could be speaking to something in the future so you have the past present future that recast and maybe how you're going to approach something or see something that you may not realize down the road so you've got your 5d because the imposition of time you know is our greatest um problem right now we you know people think we're running out of it or um for anyone a novice to the to the genre or not and i can't twist anyone's arm as i say uh but you know hopefully with a little bit of patience and uh that being a virtue you can look if you're someone who's a fan of poetry look at it from a perspective that you know uh even the quickest wit um will appreciate the more literal uh, interpretations here so that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to buck a certain number of um, not intentionally because I think you're inauthentic if you're not something that's true to yourself or doing something true to yourself and that's what right. I try to do there's nothing like every day writing one of these and on average I can if you look at the combined um, 
numbers of, of works that are in print in books or in the audiobook together with the Kindle and the ones that I haven't been published yet, I can do that. So, you know, I hope to take that format as it were, those channelings kind of combine that. So, uh, as I, you know, just want to say, you look at the cover, if you wouldn't mind holding the, the cover up again, we've got, uh, mouths talking, talking heads, figures, but we don't have any, anything with ears. We don't have anything really to speak of with eyes. Um, we just have figures that want to live on easy street gossip and, and do whatever, but watch your mouth because everything that you're saying is, you know, going to be taken literally, um, you know, in these politically correct times, you've got to be aware of that. But there are a lot of people who are looking at things superficially and we need to get past that too. So it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. That's why I'm so happy with the cover, even though it's, it's polarizing to some, some don't like the tongue sticking out, you know, so, but it's definitely I love. I think it makes sense. So a lot of these um, poems that come from different times in your life are just inspiring. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And um, I started writing in 2000, but the craft really wasn't honed uh, until I would say probably 2010 or 11 to where I thought some of these were pretty good. And I started uh, on on Facebook and some other venues uh, to put them out. And you get, you know, gratuitous comments just because, you know, to post something, they'd have to put something down. But right. when I started um, every day, kind of as if I were journaling, there seemed to be themes that were coming up again and again, and they were coming up in different ways, but they were retelling the same event. So that's, to me, uh, in the, in the abstractions for some people, they may not even see that, but they'll see recurring themes. There's even a little bit of romanticism in there. there there's a little bit of, um, sarcasm, um, through the book. There's, you know, for anyone who ever thought that doing something again involved trying to go back in the past, this is the perfect book because if you can recast the event in new terms, um and find solace or not even really solace but um just the feeling that there are no mistakes but just experiences that's something great that is forever enshrined uh just like an akashic record you know for ages so long after i'm gone this will be something i'm leaving you know uh, yeah. behind so it, it it's wonderful to do that some of our best prophets were, you know, were, were sort of, were sort of um, figures like a Nostradamus who had rhyme, even in their translations, there was rhyme and, 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 and poetry in his work. So I, I'm very, very grateful for the platform, Scott. Yeah. You got uh, different things. You even got one about extinction here. I do suspicion, extin extinction, extinction. So a lot of times, um, well, one of the things I've, I've been doing is combining a lot of words that might be homonyms or homophones or things that might be technically um, this, they have sort of a lot in common. Like in tomorrow morning, I, I rewrite that as M O U R N I N G, I believe, as opposed to morning. So, you know, the whole idea of a one night stand and the shame it provided and, and what it what it means, you kind of have a palpable sense for it when you begin your story like that. And then as the reader goes on, they're going to put in because we're going not just linearly, we're going in the 5D where the person has their own experience in the heart, in the head. Um, but for the future, what they're going to glean from it on top of mind. So we're all one. We're all feeling a, an experience, but no one's experiences are the same. Um, oh, and yeah. it, 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 
as grandiose and as far flung as it sounds, you know, that's, that's the key of the work right there. So, you know, I had uh, that I had lost when my phone broke. I had a couple different ones that I was writing. One was about the pandemic and then I involved the, uh, the crisis with, with AIDS in it because there are a lot of similarities to the inability to connect now that there were then. And it, that transcends time too, because that's something that won't change. I think we're going to feel that way as we try to, you know, reintegrate ourselves into a new society and try to try to forge our own way when it comes to relationships. I mean, it's just natural to be apprehensive about touching, you know, uh, after you've been conditioned not to <laughs> yeah. kissing, you know, so these, to me, these these things should resonate because they're uni it's about the universality of man. These are all things that that matter to all of us, you know. So, some of the more technical side. I mean, I'm not I'm not Byron. I'm not you know I'm not Shakespeare. I'm not you know Emily Dickinson. Well, non-binary, but whatever. I I. <laughs> I just think that one of the things that needs to be said is for every one of those people who are accused of uh, or are considered the best poets, at the time, it was only after their deaths that a lot of them were considered better poets and revered. So I oh, think sure. for the idea that if we can contemporize, contemporize now, is that a word? Whatever that we could do that we could do it now in this area about the things that we're all experiencing i think we'd be in a much better place but i also think the interpretation lies in the eye of the beholder so as i said i can't i uh know that i can't twist anyone's arm but i'm pretty certain that the words would resonate with everyone so yeah it's kind of like things I put on Facebook too were pretty inspirational and but it was more back more so back you know and it's like combine all those things I could make a little book <laughs> yeah you could make a book Scott and you know it would probably um, be something that you would be proud of only because you might be able to add to it you might be able to throw cards and be able to see what some of these things might have meant. And if, if they meant something that you might not have known in the past that either, you know, now, or you know, now about the future. So, you know, that, uh, ascension, especially with your gifts as, as they've gotten better through the years might be revealed through what you've been writing, you know, you know, there's so many great, quote psychics or teachers out there of, of spirituality I have quite a few books myself over there about those topics which I bought long ago actually you know like Sylvia Brown and his <laughs> mother but John Edward I always watched him you know but we all have our little special gifts and uh, creativity and uh, you put it into here see so maybe I ought to go back and try to snag some of the old ones too to that's what i'm doing with facebook every day um i'm looking in your diary yeah and of course you know as i said before um mainly right now it's simile and uh some of them recently didn't make simile because they were having some technical difficulty but simile.co and uh, uh what is it um i can't remember the name of the other one scott will post the links but yeah. they're both um, indicative of where the writing's going. I can already tell you that this, the themes might be the same, but the, the writing is becoming a little bit more, I think, familiar to a lot of people in the sense of what they understand poetry to be. Um, but that only comes with time. I mean, I'm uh, trying to get better at something that I know um, on a primal level has helped me. So if it can help other people, which I believe it can, it's, it's all the more worth it. And it's, uh, as I said before, in an audio book form, um, for people who 
at night or, or in traffic need to hear something uh, other than, you know, the, the static on the radio or, or whatnot. So uh, go check it out. So you can, are these only sold on Amazon or where? Uh, right now, uh, only Amazon. There are some outlets in England and some other places I've seen them pop up in Google searches. Uh, the Audible book is at Audible, can, and it's also in a Kindle form too. Um, so if you've got a Kindle subscription, it might be free. Um, and the Audible is available. I put that out in January because I was told there's a market for that as well. So, um, oh, yeah, I, like I said, with my job cruising along, I do a lot of driving during the day and that's, I hear about it and I'm just cruising along. Listen, sometimes I do listen to right. books. Right. I was told too, that, um, in England, especially given, given the commute commutes around London being so horrendous that they're very big into audiobooks. Um, so, you know, I, I see the, and I also see um, Vita Wolf, who actually did that. She brought a, a different flair to it in the sense that um, her Italian accent gives them a certain gravity that they don't otherwise have. So, if you're the type of person who um, resonates with that, I would definitely check that out as well. Cool. I, I I like having both. I like having the ability to read what I have and then hearing it told. Um, it's kind of like a child's bedtime story um, right. embellished. It's also, it's also nice to have something physical to keep. Mm -hmm. Treasure, mm -hmm. that kind of thing too. Certain books to have and to hold forever. To pass on. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. You also, have, you also have a YouTube channel. That I do, um, and taking a look, uh, I know you'll post that link. Yeah, as well. I'll post it. Yeah, um, and you know, for for anyone who's watching this right now, uh, all the way through, thank you because <laughs> uh, I, if you were waiting for Scott to throw cards, uh, it, it hasn't happened yet. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, one of the other things I just wanted to pass along is. Uh, if you see something you like um, and you've made a purchase, there's nothing like a review at Amazon to help give the book more exposure, more search engine optimization, things like that. So, you know, that that as well can help. So um, I, I thank you, Scott, for the forum again, as I said. Well, thank you, Jeff, for coming on. Be beautiful. Um, so I should randomly maybe pick one? The read yeah. quick again? Go ahead and pick one. Yeah. Tell me, tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> it's a little bit long. It's called you. You want me to stop? Yes. And given what you and I were talking about earlier about addiction, it 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 actually is uh, an apt reading. I don't, Do know have, if I'm, I don't know if I'm a very good audible reader. <laughs> well, <laughs> you we want shall... me to stop. Yeah. You want me to stop because someone else does. You think I have a problem. You were the first to hit rock bottom. You've wallowed in self pity through indulgence of years. And you want to turn back the clock for both of us. You're a bundle of nerves, an engine running on fear about what I'll become when you're no longer here. So you want me to stop just because you pinned all of that on me and you want to stop because the apple does not fall far from the tree. When your view of your own life grew maudlin, I could have been on my last leg hobbling, but sowing those seeds of wild oats when you're no longer standing on your own or stand on your own. It only made me stand my ground. Okay. I should have done it long ago. When your growth is stunted, you have a lot of time to make up for. 
you want me to stop because after all these years, you felt my example is improper. Like clockwork, you know what makes me tick because life is like dawn up until the ring of the last call. I'm not stopping because you know I want to have fun. So what does that say to you? You what want me said, to stop? What it says to me is the, the uh, sort of fast pace with which uh, an addict doesn't think about what they're doing, only the perceptions of others who are trying to be helpful to them overrides anything else until I personally, let's say as the narrator for all intents and purposes can decide to stop, it, it won't stop. And that goes for anything in, in life um, that is a hardship or uh, something that's dangerous to us. So yes, th there's projecting in there, projecting you may end up like your, your parent uh, or someone that you know uh, and whom you love who has the same problem as you. Um, and in a lot of cases, they're unwilling to change and have given the same excuses to you through the years. And that's sort of their warning to you. Um, when they can't warn you literally, they warn you subliminally. And I think that that's what I was telling myself when I wrote it. Yeah, it was pretty good, though. I mean, I, I had to read it. A few, I had to look at it a few times. Yeah, I, and you know, again, this kind of commonly things bring things into me when I read them myself. For me, it, it, it's like pulling, as I said, a divinely inspired idea through here, feeling it here, knowing that you actually can affect your life because when that was written, it was written as a warning um so you have you know the past where it was done but you also have the present past or, or the past present where you can take control of everything that you couldn't take control of then because maybe it's resonating with you now only about you and not your father and not you know not someone else maybe in the past that you might just be fixated on they're saying it to you and you don't want to do anything about it so it has re relevance above the normal constraint of time of past, present, future. It's never right. too late. It's as, as long as we're here, it's all one. It's, as I said before, as if God um, sees this all with our free will. And in a painting, yeah, he might know what's going to happen. So it's still, but it's forever playing out. Um, and... We really shouldn't beat ourselves up for what we've done in the past, what might happen in the future when all we have is now. That's it. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, oh, what, what plans did you have for a YouTube channel? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, the YouTube channel I would like to start doing is with events that are happening, maybe um, use it more as a, a platform for um, a contemporary sort of study of the public figures in our lives, um, what we see going on in the news, and then putting forth either with some psychics or some other, you know, maybe I will, you know, take up the moniker, you know, Poetic Justice by Jeff, you know, <laughs> and Poetic Justice by Jeff Tarot, I don't know. And start to convene each reading with, you know, an idea that this is what we're in right now and this is what we're seeing, but this is something that's um, not ephemeral. It'll, it'll pass, you know, it's just part of the cycle we need to go through. So hopefully it can become along the lines of what all the other uh, areas of the uh, tarot community are but it can be something unique um, through the writings. And I would probably go exclusively if I had the, and when I have the audience uh, to a YouTube channel or my YouTube channel and, you know, post them through written for form where I'd read them there 
and then I would have people chime in um, with their own comments and hopefully that would lead me in the direction of what people want to see more of um, for content. Uh, and, you know, that would inspire me just as much as I hope as I inspire everyone else. Yeah, you bring a little co comedic poetry into the mix and mm -hmm. then do a little... And Renee Not pointed out, people. Renee, oh, that's, right. that's right, you were on Renee. Right, when I spoke yeah. to, to Renee, she pointed out that she had noted uh, a couple of things that she viewed as humorous as well. Uh, when I look at it, in hindsight, I, I get a real chuckle out of certain lines because there's nothing really contrived about the writing, but there are dimes, you know, 10 cent words um, that aren't really foreign to everybody but they rhymed and they rhymed not just conveniently but viscerally because they felt you know so good to say at that particular point so you know that's why i'm so hung up or right now looking at the idea of you know calling the next one um you know rhythm is rhyme because instead of rhythm and rhyme you know, if there's not enough rhyme to your liking, I, you know, I, I offer you rhythm and rhyme um, and, you know, that sort of thing. So the next one's in the works, but just as the cover says, watch your mouths. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaks for itself. Easy Street by Jeff Bailey. And you're part of the tarot community. The oh, very, community. very active community. Very yes. active and sharing. So hopefully that continues. Nice to hang out with you, my friend, and thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Have a great day. Namaste. Namaste.